Riley, I want to ask you why you chose to spoke, speak out, because my my issue with this oftentimes, and I know a lot of people have this same issue, is they say, if this is really affecting women, then women need to be the ones speaking out on this issue. And there are so many who are silent. Why did you make the decision to speak out? And why do you think a lot of women in your position choose not to speak out? Um, I think people don't speak out um, because they're scared. They're told they'll be canceled. They have to face the woke mob. But speaking from my experience, I have had tenfold support in terms or in comparison to anything negative. Um, I The only negative comments that I've received, which has been very few, um, is either you're transphobic, which is not true. Um, you're bad at swimming. Why didn't you just swim faster? Um, I'm not bad at swimming <laughs> or you're ugly, which I also don't think is true. And so those Ridiculous. things, um, it rolls off my back. And I, I wish more people would realize that there are so many more people in this country who can recognize that this is wrong and recognize that this is unfair. Um, but it's been made evident that that or the minority here is um, loud about it. And they're wanting you to believe there are more people agreeing with them than there really are. Um, I mean, females make up 50%, let's say, of the world's population. Mm -hmm. um, the transgender community, I don't know exact statistics, but what, half a percent? So we're really catering everything that, you know, the past 50 years, Title IX has aimed to, um, you know, what it's aimed to improve and what it was intended or created to protect um, we're catering that to maybe half a percent of the population. I mean, it's utterly ridiculous to say that it's transphobic to simply acknowledge biological differences between men and women and to simply acknowledge that if you have biological men infiltrating women's sports for biological women, there's going to be an injustice, a grave injustice, and it's happening. Right. You see it. So it's, it's right. you know, that is a very weak talking point. And I say this all the time. These people who, who don't know how to really debate the issue or aren't on the side of facts, they just vomit out these words, transphobic, bigoted, racist. I mean, whatever word they can come up with. You're ugly. I mean, ugly. Utterly ridiculous stuff, often, oftentimes personal attacks because they are not on the side of the facts and not on the side of reality. And this is a pattern that we unfortunately see unfolding in many different arenas, not just this one, but also the political arena and whatnot. I want to just ask you before we go over to Natalia, you've been very lucky. Um, and then we're going to come back for a few more questions. You've been very lucky, lucky to have the support of your university. Do you hear from any students who see you out there front and center. You've been on some very big no name shows talking about this. Do you hear from them saying they don't necessarily have the support? They are scared, asking advice, what to do, wanting to speak out, but being concerned. Have you had those conversations behind the scenes? Oh, yeah. Um, I've realized that my situation is an anomaly. Um, that's why in the beginning of this interview, I mentioned how grateful I am for the University of Kentucky for, you know, protecting me and encouraging me to speak my heart. Um, because there are so many girls across the NCAA who have said to me, you know, my coaches won't let me say anything. My athletic director won't let me speak out about this. They want me to go to media training. Um, I actually had tons of Leah's teammates reach out to me and say, how can we speak out about this? What can we do without having our athletic careers threatened and things like that? And so it is definitely like they are trying to instill fear um, among their athletes. And it's, it's wrong. It's a, at this point, this is becoming a, you know, that we're, our free our freedom of speech is being infringed upon. So it's not just at this point, our athletics, there's so much more that's going into this now. And so um, I'm just really grateful that I haven't had to deal with that. I don't know if it would have changed much mm -hmm. um, since I am someone who has always been brought up to speak my mind, um, to never waver from your beliefs. And so, but I, I'm extremely grateful that I have had that support because it makes a difference. Yeah, let me just remind the women out there, any any female athletes who are listening to this, there is power in numbers always. So it may be terrifying for you to speak out on your own. It becomes much less terrifying when there are many people involved. And I say this, you know, um, audience knows, I say this about every issue that even, you know, during COVID times, I was advocating for businesses to speak up and saying, you have to kind of speak up 
up together. It can't just be one business. It has to be businesses at large. So if you're out there and you're worried about speaking up, the answer may be to solidify a, a group of women um, who are valuable, who have trained extensively and speak out together because that always makes a bigger mark. And it becomes less, much harder to penalize people when they're standing firm together on an issue. If you like the short clip, you can catch another one here or you can catch the full episode right here.